And we're back in the garden this morning. Dabney, good morning. Good morning. Good yeah. morning. We have a bunch of questions, and we're taking some calls this All right, morning, well, too. Well, before we get going, now, you know, okay. it's a yeah. lot of self-satisfaction for me to come down the show, help viewers garden. Yeah. And i got to tell the viewers, you texted me last week, you went and bought three pansies. How are they doing? They're doing fine. See, that's great to be able to get somebody interested yeah. in gardening. That's yeah. what it's all about. I hope they're going to stay alive. It's only been one week, though. That's so. okay, but we're ahead of the game so far. <laughs> yeah, I might have to borrow your green thumb. <laughs> uh, but let's get to one of our callers here. This is Sharon in Chesapeake. She has a question for you, Dabney, about the, a okay. dwarf spruce tree. All right. Sharon, uh, Sharon, are you there? Yes, I am. All Hi. right. Well, what's the question? Hi. Our dwarf of Alberta spruce um, turned brown kind of slowly, and it had a gray powder on the trunk. I wondered if you could give me, um, it did die, the cause of death maybe, and if it's safe to plant another spruce there or uh, a different kind of plant in that space. Uh, three things to keep in mind. Of course, spruce like full sun, but the biggest problem we have with the, with the dwarf Alberta spruce is A, too much water, particularly within a container. B, they're very susceptible to spider mites, and we can always test for spider mites. Take a white piece of paper and tap the branch down, and if, if you get reddish smears or if you see little dots crawling, they're spider mites. And they are controllable, but the smaller the leaf plant we grow, then the more susceptible to damage on spider mites because they're a very active insect. Uh, but yes, you can go ahead and plant another one there. And the main thing, you might want to put some all-purpose oil on periodically, to keep, particularly when it gets warm uh, in this time of year because it has been dry. Because spider mites are still active as long as we have warm temperatures. All right. That's, wow, you know your stuff, Dabney. <laughs> uh, another question here. This is from uh, Bobby Parrish. He has a mature Cape, uh, Cape Myrtle that has never bloomed. And, uh, and what's, what's going on with that? If you, have, if you see the buds but they don't bloom, what's happening? Uh, it may not be getting enough sunlight. It's the only thing I can suspect. Uh, now, the one thing, in, and I'm assuming that the buds you're seeing are viable buds. I mean, a lot of times, like in the early spring, we'll have the old seed pods. And if we don't prune those off in February, March, sometimes it slows the plant down to the point that it never sets buds for the next year, particularly if you're getting limited sunlight. Again, Crate Merle one of those plants, full, full sun. The more sun, the better. Yeah, and we have another call also for you, Dabney. Uh, Debbie in Suffolk. Debbie, good morning. What's your question? My question is, um, I have a lot of the Lyrope, Lyrope plants, and I would like to divide them. Can I divide them now? Uh, or do I need to wait and do that a uh, certain time of the year in spring or another time of the year? And h exactly how do I do that? Just with a shovel? Okay. Dig them up and divide them or what? Yeah, Lirope is one of these plants that rhizomes and they get clumps. Uh, is With the temperatures what they are right now, I have no problem with dividing them even right now. And You just take and dig a big clump and then just cut the clump in fourths or halves and replant it back. If it gets much later into the year, then I might suggest wait and do it in the spring. And what we do the first of March, or into February, we take a lawnmower, cut the dead foliage off the lirope, weed, weed eater, whatever, and then as they start to sprout the new sprouts, you can then dig the clumps and divide them the same way as you would this time of year. Keep in mind, whenever you do divide something like it with any perennials, when you plant, replant back into the ground, always mix a little compost and use a plant starter. That way you're going to stimulate better root development So, because you are going to be cutting some of the roots when you divide any perennial. All right, and uh, we have another call for you, Dabney. Okay. Duana from Norfolk. Good morning. What's your question? Good morning. Yes, um, I'm. Uh, this is my first time like growing uh, tomatoes, mm -hmm. and I have a tomato plant in the backyard. But with the weather um, changing, I didn't know how to protect the plant um, from the weather. Okay. Uh, it sounds like one of Jeff's questions yeah. when he was going to make the first time this year. Yeah. Uh, you can't really protect them, unfortunately. They, you know, this is the end of the season. What I would recommend doing, whatever tomatoes you have left on the plant, pull those off. Even if they're green, you can pull them green, put them on the windowsill, and they'll ripen. They're not going to have the flavor the ones earlier had, but then take that same container and plant something for the fall. Put a cool weather plant in, whether it be lettuce, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, whatever you particularly like to enjoy eating, and put that in. We'll grow that this fall, and we can get another crop. Just keep in mind, whenever you replant, always, again, mix in a little bit of fertilizer and a little bit of organic matter because you've grown in that soil before. All right. Well, great tips for, uh, for fo the fall, Dabney. Right. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you again next week, but thanks for your help again this morning with My those pleasure. questions. Yeah. Good knowledge. All right, we're back with another check of weather and some more news coming up after this break.